Scott. Hey, Scott. Thanks for all the work you do keeping the podcast going. I listen almost every day going to and from work. Um, I have a question about law labels uh, that are required for certain products like bedding and stuffed toys, etc. Um, I'm new to private labeling and have spent several weeks looking for my first product. I finally decided on something, started ordering samples, but I happened to come across some articles on law labels. Uh, based off of what I've found, I'm fairly confident the product I'm leaning towards will need these labels. Uh, anyways, I wanted to see if you have any experience with this and if you could share some insight on it. I took one look at the annual state to state registration costs and all the paperwork and frustration that goes with that. And I'm about to kill off this idea and head back to the drawing board. Thanks for any help you can give and uh, keep putting out the podcast. It's so helpful for me and um, a lot of other newbies out here. Eric, thank you so much for the question, but I need to hear you guys' first name. No, I'm going to answer your question, but I got your name from the email that came through with your voicemail. Um, but Eric, thank you so much for the question. And I'm just, I'm just busting right now. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, to answer your question, uh, yes, you want to be careful with anything like this, especially with kids or anything that's hazardous or that you think that could be hazardous. You know, when you're first starting, and, and some people look at this as an opportunity. They're like, well, if I can go ahead and launch something that other people don't want to launch, then there's less competition and you'd be 100% right. But you are, you know, getting into a more complicated space and you're uh, potentially at risk because you're, you know, you're putting a product in, uh, you know, in the, in the hands of someone that could harm themselves. And if we're talking about a baby product, that's a huge thing. All right. So you definitely want to, to find out what you need to have to be compliant, but you also want to protect yourself. And this is where liability insurance would come in. Uh, I mean, everyone should have liability insurance anyway, but if you don't, you better make sure your product is not going to be able to harm someone. And I mean, almost any product could harm someone if they don't use it properly. Right. Um, so then you got to make sure that all of your labeling is correct. You got to make sure if it's, you know, FDA approved or, you know, t certain tests have been done and all of that stuff. So whenever anyone asks me about this, first off, I say, are you in love with the product? And is there something else that you can find that wouldn't be, you know, at this level? Uh, especially when first starting, because when you first start, you want momentum and this is not going to be a momentum run for you because you're going to be, you know, you're going to be, you know, sitting around figuring out how to get these certain things done and waiting for an answer and then waiting to make sure that this goes, gets approved. And then the, if the testing doesn't come through and it's approved, um, but in your case, you're just saying like, okay, I want to sell these things, but I want to get a label on it. So this way here I'm compliant. And if something comes back, and, or someone does come back and, and try to come after me, I'm protected and all that stuff. So I, I'm, not a, I'm not a lawyer, a legal advisor or any of that stuff. So let's just be clear there. Um, I would definitely contact, uh, you know, a lawyer, you know, at this point uh, that, that has, you know, that has some experience with this. I think another step I would probably go, I might even go here first, is I'd probably reach out to Michelle Love. Uh, Michelle, I actually met at one of our TAS live events in Arizona, found out that she was a liability uh, insurance agent uh, or broker, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, she's been doing it for years, and not just liability, but just insurance in general, but she understands the liability end of things, which I think is hard to find, especially when I was first starting, I was trying to find someone to give me the answers, and every insurance broker I would speak to, they had no idea what this, what this was or what we were trying to do. Um, it was just really foreign to them, but Michelle understands it 100%. She also knows like what kind of policy that you would want to get, but she also pr probably could direct you to where you would have to go to be compliant. And I think that's where I would go, right? I'd go there. And then if she might, you know, she might say, well, you're, you're definitely going to want to make sure these things are, you know, these check boxes are done. And, uh, and I've got a resource for that. Maybe she has an attorney that she could, that she can send you to, or maybe direct you to, to someone that could then move you along in this journey and kind of give you the right things, um, in this. So I would definitely say that. And then also I would say, definitely figure out what type of business entity you're going to be, uh, you're going to be using. Um, you know, again, I'm not a legal advisor or anything like that, but I think anyone starting out should have an LLC, which is limited liability, um, business, 
And uh, I think, you know, we've talked about it with Josh Bowerly, who's a CPA, who's actually my CPA, and he, he went over all of the different entities. And um, I think that's another thing I think that everyone should, should do just as one, like the first line of defense, but it's not going to 100% protect you. And then liability insurance would be another barrier. But then also knowing what are the things that you need to have to cover yourself or at least the best way possible so you understand what you're getting yourself into. So all of those things I would I would address. Now, you, you kind of mentioned, should I just maybe go back to the drawing board? Me personally, with all of this stuff, I haven't validated anything. I, I can't really validate anything yet because, you know, it's risky. I'd probably myself probably just go back to the drawing board. There's so many other products and markets that you could probably tap into without these headaches. So the question is, is, is it going to be worth spending the next three to five months just getting this stuff figured out, I don't know if that's how long it's going to take, but it could, or would you be better off to just go after a product that you feel like you can just kind of move faster and uh, and kind of get your feet wet uh, and do a test order and validate and kind of go through the whole process? Like, would that be better? And to me, that would be better in, for me. You know, it doesn't mean it's going to be for you. If you want to go through all of that stuff and you think the long-term thing is going to be better for you, that's fine. I'm just a fast mover. I like to, to kind of get things going and, uh, and, and kind of get some results by, by taking action, as I always say. And then I can kind of see and then, you know, then adjust by, you know, by seeing what happens. Uh, but in this case, you're going to be going through a little bit of red tape here. You know, let's just face it. I mean, that's that's what's gonna that's what's gonna happen. All right. So I know this wasn't an awesome answer for you. Hopefully, it's giving you some direction, or maybe even just just some insights. Like I said, if I was at the table with you, or we're at the coffee table right now, and and we're having that cup of coffee, that's what I'd be saying. I'd be saying like, listen, Eric, you know, is this? Are you in love with this product? You know, and if so, then go for it. If you're not, then move on. That's what I would say. If you guys want to submit a question, head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash ask, and you can do that. I want to also, again, remind you guys, if you're brand new and this is your first time to the show, I want to welcome you. I love hanging out with you guys. This is just awesome to be able to virtually connect like this, and that's why I love the Ask Scott sessions, but if you are brand new and you're just getting your feet wet and you don't understand the entire process, the entire business model... I would recommend attending one of my live free workshops. This is where I break it down for you in five phases. How to pick a market and a product, how to source it, how to do a pre-launch, how to do a launch, how to promote the product, and everything in between. We go over that on a workshop and uh, we, we go through every single thing. We also do live Q&A. So if you want to attend one of them, I would love to invite you to the next one and you can register for the next one by heading over to theamazingseller.com forward slash workshop and you can register there for an upcoming workshop well hey there thank you so much for listening to that episode of ask scott now that was just a highlight from one of our full episodes where i generally answer three to four questions on a podcast if you want to go back and listen to all of the past archives of not just the ask scott session but all of the full episodes where i do interviews with top amazon sellers people starting from scratch and building a business if you want to listen to any of those episodes head over to theamazingseller.com and you can find all of that over there you can also find details there on how you can ask your own question and get it aired on an upcoming ask scott session and possibly see it here on youtube or just on the podcast all right so definitely head over to theamazingseller.com there's tons of resources over there for you to be able to build your e-commerce and Amazon business. So definitely go check that out. Now, I just want to remind you one thing before I let you go. There's a lot of information out there and some of it is really, really good. What I want you to remember is you have to not just consume the information, you have to actually apply that information. So take this information that you learned here today and apply it to your business. And this way here, you can get results. As my shirt says, I wear it almost daily take action. We'll see you guys.